Hi, I'm Peter Burris, and welcome to another CUBE Conversation from our wonderful studios in Palo Alto, California. Great conversation today. We've got Christian Rodatis, who's the CEO of Datamir, here to talk about some of the trends within the overall analytics space, one of the most important things happening in technology today. Christian, welcome back to theCUBE. Good morning, Peter. Thanks for having me today. Oh, it's great to have you here. Hey, let's start with uh, kind of some of the preliminaries. What's happening at Datamir? Well, we've been around for nine years now, right? Which is which is a lot of time in in the in a in a very agile technology space. And I actually just came back from an investee uh, offsite uh, that was arranged from one of our biggest investors, and everything is centering around the cloud, right? And uh, we were trotting along uh, within the Hadoop ecosystem, the big data ecosystem over the past couple of years. And since uh, 12, 15 months, the transition in the analytics market and how it's transforming from on-premise to the cloud uh, in, a, in a hybrid way as, as well is, has been stunning, right? And we are faced with a, with a challenge in uh, innovating uh, uh, in, in those spaces and uh, getting making our product relevant for on-premise uh, deployments, for cloud deployments in various uh, different cloud platforms and in a hybrid fashion as well. And we've been traditionally working with customers that are, have been laggards in terms of uh, cloud adoption because we do a lot of business in financial services, in uh, insurance, healthcare, telecommunications. But even in those industries over the past year, it has been uh, stunning how they accelerate cloud adoption and how they move analytic workloads to the cloud. Well, interesting, those sound like uh, sometimes leaders in the analytics world, even if they're laggards in the cloud. And there's something of a relationship there where people didn't want to do a lot of their analytics because they were doing analytics in some of the most strategic, sensitive data, and they felt pressure to not give that off to a company that they felt perhaps, or an industry that was a little bit less ready from an infrastructure standpoint. But our research shows, shows pretty strongly that we're seeing a push to adoption precisely because so much of that uh, ecosystem got wrapped up in the infrastructure and never got to the possible value of analytics. So is, is that helping to force this along, do you think? The idea of- Absolutely, right? If, if, you, look, if you look at the, at the, at the key drivers, and uh, there was some other uh, analyst research that I read uh, this week, why are uh, people being motivated, moving their analytic workloads in the into the cloud? It's really less cost, it's really business agility. How do they become independent from IT and procure uh, services across the organization in a very uh, simple, easy, and, and fast, uh, in a uh, fast fashion? And then there's a, a lot of fears associated with it, right? It's, it's data governance, it's security, it's data privacy is what these industries that we predominantly uh, work on, uh, work in are concerned with, right? And we provide a solution framework that actually helps them to tra transition those uh, on-premise on analytic workloads into the cloud and, and still get the enterprise grade features that they used uh, to from a uh, from an on-premise uh, solution deployment. Yeah. So, in other words, a lot of businesses confused failure to deal with big data infrastructure as failure to do big data. That's uh, correct. I want to I want to build on something you just said, specifically the governance issue, because I think you're absolutely right. There's a there's an enormous lack of understanding about what really constitutes data governance. It used to be, oh, data governance is what the data administrator does when they do modeling and who gets to change the model and who owns the model and who gets to use all that other stuff. We're talking about something fundamentally different as we embed more deeply some of these analytics directly into high value business activities that are being utilized or performed by high cost uh, business executives. Absolutely. How does data governance play out? And I'm going to ask you specifically, what are, what are you guys doing that makes data governance more accessible, more manageable within uh, Datamir customers? So I think the, there's uh, there's two key features to our solution that support this. So number one, we have very much a self-service aspect to it. So we're pushing the abilities to, to model and uh, create views on, on, on the big data assets that are uh, persisting in, in the data lakes uh, towards the business user, right? 
but we do this in a very governed way, right? We can uh, we, we can provide uh, data, full data lineage, so we can uh, uh, audit every single step, how the data is being sourced, how it's been manipulated on the way, and provide an audit trail, uh, which is very important for many of the, the customers uh, that we work with. And we, we really bring this into the hands of the business users without much IT inter interference. They don't have to work on uh, models to be built and so on and so forth. And this is really what helps them uh, build rapid uh, analytic applications that uh, provide a lot of value and, and benefits for their business processes. So you talked about how you're using governance or the ability to provide a manageable governance regime to open up the aperture on the uh, utilization of some of these high value analytics frameworks by broader numbers of individuals within the organization. That seems to me to be a pretty significant challenge for a lot of businesses. Uh, it's not enough to just have a ivory tower group of data scientists be good at crafting data, understanding data, and then advising people what actions to take based on that data. It seems it has to be more broadly diffused within an organization. What do you think? So, so this is clearly the, the trend, and as uh, these analytic services move to the cloud, you will see this even more so, right? Uh, you, you, will be, you will have curated data assets, and you provide access control for certain user groups that uh, can see and, and work with this data, but then you need to provide a solution framework that enables these customers to consume this in a very uh, seamless and, and easy way. And this is basically what we are doing. We want to push it down to the end user and give them the ability to work on complex analytical problems uh, using our framework in a, in a governed way, in a fast way, in, in a very iterative uh, analytic workflow. A lot of our customers, they, they have analytic, or they pursue analytic problems that are of investigative nature. And this, uh, you, you cannot do this if you rely on uh, IT to build new models, right. to uh, delay the process. Or if you way. only rely on IT. Or you know, only rely on a, IT, right? They want to do this on their own and create their own uh, views. Uh, depending on the analytical workflow in a very rapid uh, rapid way. And, and so we, we support this in a, in a highly governed way. Uh, they can do this in a very uh, fast and, and rapid fashion. And as it moves to the, uh, to the cloud, it uh, provides them with even uh, more opportunities to do so. So as CEO of Datamir, you're spending a lot of time with customers. Are Absolutely. there some patterns that you're seeing customers in addition to <laughs> buying data mirror, but are there some patterns in addition to uh, what you just described that the successful companies are utilizing to facilitate this diffusion? You know, are they training mm -hmm. people more? Are they yep. in, are they embedding this more deeply into other types of applications or workloads? What are some of those patterns of success that you're seeing amongst your customers? So this is a, this is a very interesting question, right? Because a, a lot of big data initiatives uh, within uh, companies fail for the lack of adoption, right? So they build these big data lakes or ramp up cloud services and they never really, uh, really see adoption. And so the successful customers we work with, they have uh, a couple of things they do differently than, than others. So they have a centralized uh, COE type of organization usually that facilitates and promotes uh, and educates people on, number one, the data assets that are being available through the organization, about the tool sets that are being used, and amongst one of them, uh, obviously, Datamere within our customers. And uh, they facilitate uh, constant uh, education and experience sharing across the organization uh, for the use of, of big data assets throughout the organization. And, and these companies, they, they see adoption, right? And they, it, it spreads throughout the organization. It becomes a, uh, uh, increasing, uh, has increasing momentum and uh, adoption across various business departments for, for many high value use cases. So we, we've done a lot of research. I, I myself have spent a lot of time in questions of, of technology adoption questions within large enterprises. Mm -hmm. uh, and and you, you, you absolutely described it, it fails to adopt. And from an adoption standpoint, it's called they abandon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely true. One of, the things that, one of the things that often catalyzes whether or not someone continues to adopt or, or a group determines to abandon is a lack of understanding of what the returns are, what kind of returns mm -hmm. these changes of behavior are initiating or instantiating. And I've always been curious why a lot of these software tools don't do a good job of actually utilizing data about utilization 
to, uh, from a big data standpoint, to improve the adoption of big data. Are you seeing any effort made by companies to use Datamir to help businesses better adopt Datamir? I, we, I haven't seen that yet. I, I see this more with our OEM customers. So we've got OEM customers that analyze the cloud consumption with their customers and provide uh, analytics on, on usage across the organizations. I, I see these things. And from our standpoint, we facilitate this process by providing uh, use case discovery workshops. So we have a services organization that helps our customers to, to see the light literally, right? To, to understand uh, what's the nature of the data assets available, how can they leverage for uh, specific use case, high value use case uh, implementations, uh, experience sharing, what are other customers uh, doing, what kind of uh, high value applications are they going after in a, in a specific industry, and, and things like this. We do lunch and learns with our customers. We, we just recently did one with a, with a big healthcare provider, and uh, the, the interest is definitely there. You get 200 people in a room for a lunch and learn meeting, and, and everybody's interesting how they can uh, make their life uh, easier and make better business uh, decisions uh, based on the data assets that are available uh, throughout the organization. Yeah, it's amazing when a lunch and learn meeting goes from 20 people to 200 yeah, people. That absolutely. really becomes much more focused on absolutely. learning. Uh, so, uh, one other question I have related to this is that uh, you've got a lot of experience in the analytics space, you know, more than big data, and how the, how the overall analytics space has evolved over the years. Uh, we have, uh, we have uh, uh, some research that pretty strongly suggests that it's time to start thinking about big data not as a thing unto itself, but as part of an aggregate approach to how enterprises should think about analytics. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think, how, how do you think an enterprise should start to refashion its understanding of the role that big data plays in a broader understanding of analytics? So if, you, if I look Back in the earlier days of my career, I come from the from the EDW world, right? And and then you, you had all the large enterprises had EDWs, and they tried to uh, build a centralized repository of, of data assets. Uh, highly modeled. Highly mo highly modeled. A lot of work to set up, structured, highly modeled, uh, extreme. Uh, extreme complex to, to modify and, and service uh, new application requests from, from business users. And, and then came the, 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 the da Hadoop data lake based big data approach that, that said, um, dump the data in, and, and this is where we were a part with and where we became very successful in providing a tool framework that allows customers to, to build uh, virtual views into these data assets in a very rapid fashion driven by, by the business uh, business user community. But to, to some extent, these data lakes have, uh, have also uh, had uh, issues in servicing the, the bread and butter BI user community throughout the, uh, throughout the organization. And the, the EDW never really went away, right? So now we have EDWs, we have uh, data lakes that uh, service different uh, analytic application requirements throughout the organization. And even reporting systems. And, and, and even reporting systems. And, and, and now the third wave is, is coming by moving workloads into the cloud. And if you look in, into the cloud, the, the wealth uh, of uh, of available solutions to a customer becomes even more uh, complex. The cloud vendors uh, themselves uh, build out uh, tons of different solutions to service different analytical uh, needs. The marketplaces offer hundreds of, of solutions of third party vendors and, and the customers try to try to figure out how, how all these things can be stitched together and provide the right services for the right business user community throughout the organization. So what we see moving forward will be will be a hybrid uh, approach that will uh, that will retain some of the on-premise uh, EDW and data lake services, and those will be combined with multi-cloud services. There will also not be a, a single cloud service, and we, we also we're already seeing this uh, uh, today. So one of our customers is uh, Sprint Pinsight, the the advertising business of the Sprint. Uh, telecommunications companies, they, they have a, a massive uh, Hadoop on-premise uh, uh, data lake, and then uh, they do all the, uh, the, the pre-processing of uh, the, the ads data from the network uh, with Datamere on-premise, the, on the, uh, on the, on, on -premise and we condense down the, uh, the data asset from a daily volume of 70 terabytes to eight, 
and this gets exposed to, to a secret uh, cloud-based data warehouse service uh, for BI consumption uh, throughout the organization. So you see these, these hybrid, uh, very agile uh, uh, services uh, emerging uh, uh, throughout our customer base, and I, I, I believe this will be the future. Really. Yeah, one of the things we like about the concept or the approach of virtual view is precisely that. It focuses in on the value that the data is creating and not the underlying implementation so that you have greater flexibility about whether you treat it as a data a, a big data approach or, or an EDW approach, or whether you put it here or whether you put it there. But by focusing on the outcome that it's delivered, it allows you a lot of flexibility in the implementation you employ. Absolutely, I agree. Phenomenal, Christian Rodatis, CEO of Datamir. Thanks again thanks for so being much. on theCUBE. Appreciate it, thanks Peter. You bet.